Hello, welcome to It's Tea Time with Terza. My name is Terza Andrews. Today we're going to be talking about how to overcome church hurt. I will share with you some of the things that I've actually heard and have experienced. I know some of you have had those types of experiences and we'll be talking deeply about how we can use the points to ponder to overcome that church hurt. Many times we go into a church looking for clarity, understanding. We're looking for someone to guide us into our spiritual lives or through our spiritual lives. We're looking to overcome our adversities and we want to be able to have a family relationship with those that are connected to us in our church but oftentimes it doesn't work out that way. So I want you to stay tuned and we're gonna talk about how to overcome church hurt. And we'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, so welcome back to It's Tea Time with Terza. My name is Terza V. Andrews, and it is my pleasure to be here with you today. Today, we're going to be talking about how to overcome church hurt. It can be difficult. It can be painful. It can be embarrassing. It could be any of those things. Being embarrassed, having to have your life exposed in front of a crowd of people without your permission, many things. According to Barna statistics, 28% of adults have stopped attending church. That equals out to about 65 million people. Now, if you add the children into that, that's a lot. And we wonder why, why is this happening? Oftentimes we think it's just you know, the service is boring or, you know, you're not really getting much out of it. But most importantly, it's the leadership. It's the leadership that is causing division. We're having these clicks. People are not communicating. Um, they have their favorites. Um, it could be any of those things. Now, I personally had the experience of been a part of a, what I thought was an amazing ministry. And the reason why I thought it was so amazing is because I had the opportunity to be free, be free to, to pray and to do the things that, you know, I thought church should have. Churches should have people interceding for them. And at the end of the day, um, we all need prayer, but many of us don't know how to actually pray. We spend our time begging and pleading God for answers, and we're surrounded by people that are not really for us. How in the world could going to church not be for you? How can you be surrounded by people that's supposed to love God and you're getting hurt just like someone out in the street? What is the cause of this dynamic, this painful place of serenity? We desire to have family and friends and social networks like the singles ministry, the women's ministry, the men's ministry. We expect in those areas of ministry that they would strengthen us and encourage us to, to do greater things, greater works. I was a part of a singles ministry in this wonderful church that I attended. So I thought, and it was for that moment and that time in my life, but I look back and I was like, man, I'm so disappointed, so disappointed in my experience because that's where I, I met Les Brown. 
that's where I met someone who kind of catapulted me into my destiny to help me think about what I want to do with my life. I never forget leaving church, me and my girls, and we went up to the gas station. It was BP at the time. I think it's Exxon now. But we went into the gas station and it had a sign on the door. It says something about Les Brown coming and I love Les Brown. I bought this book, Maximize Your Potential by Miles Monroe, and Les Brown did the the forward. I think it's called the forward, and uh, Les Brown signed, and he was like, you got me signing somebody else's book? <laughs> well, it's because he wrote it, and I, like I said, I love Les Brown, and so, um, but I was at this church, and my spirit, higher self, intuition, Holy Spirit said, Back then, I would call it the Holy Spirit said, go back to where you were blessed. And that's where I had saw Les Brown. And I went back and I started attending the church. And it was good. I was singing on the choir. I was in the drama department. I was a part of the women's ministry. I was a part of leadership. I helped clean the church. I did all of these things, right? However, each thing that I did, I wasn't always welcome. I was also a co-director um, for the singles ministry. And I, I was in my 40s. So, you know, my idea of singleness and a 25-year-old's uh, mindset of singleness was two different things. So um, I told my pastor at the time, I said, uh, two heads of anything is a monster. Okay. And God had given me these visions and scriptures and all of this kind of stuff concerning, you know, how to run the singles ministry. And we'll have more in just a moment. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Terza V. Andrews. I wanted to take a moment to share with you a moment in time with Miss Sarah Louise Nichols. I was doing ministry as I do every day. Um, I was dropping off a client and I saw Miss Nichols sitting at the bus stop and I heard in my spirit to go back and pick up Miss Sarah. Now this has happened to me several times, but I'm inspired today to share this moment in time while it's fresh. When I heard in my spirit to go back and pick up Miss Sarah, I went back and picked up Miss Sarah and I told her that I'm a Lyft driver and I wanted to offer her a ride for free. The Lord sure do answer prayer. I said, well, good. How you doing? We had a conversation. The old saying where you say, uh, you can't make me doubt him, I know too much about him. <laughs> I grew up with that. I was raised Christian and we gotta begin to do the things that we hear However, Miss Sarah said that as a homeless woman, I think she said by a police officer, and he split her head right down the middle. And she said she cried out to God to heal her. And she said that God sealed her skull up, her head up, sealed it up. So to my recollection, she didn't go to the hospital. She cried out to God, and God heard her. She now lives in a senior citizen building right around the corner from me. And I thank God for her testimony because I could just feel the energy from her telling, telling that story. I can feel what she was feeling just for a moment. And I thank God for that. So somebody out there, you might be wondering, how do I get my prayers answered? Do it with sincerity and thank God for it in advance. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Peace. Hello, welcome back to It's Tea Time with Terza. We're having an amazing conversation today about church hurt. Hopefully you see yourself in this episode and you'll be able to overcome your church hurt. And I don't know if it's jealousy or whatever set in, but the young lady said that I came up with everything and I told the 
announcements lady that, you know, don't announce this until we get feedback from the other director. So I shared it with her, sent it in an email and said, if you have any changes you want to, to make, you know, that would be fine. And uh, she never sent me anything. And then the announcement went through without even, you know, me confirming uh, what was to be said. And so at any rate, um, they had a meeting and at the meeting, uh, we was discussing, you know, me taking over. I didn't know it, but I just had an idea. I implemented it and I sent it, I sent it forward. Now that could have been a hurtful situation. I resigned from leadership. I told them I'm, I'm, I'm able to, to follow, you know, I don't have to be in leadership. I could just follow. I could just be a part of the group because I was in a singles ministry. And see, my idea of being in a single ministry meant we were the ones that were to clean the church, to keep the grounds up and those types of things. Singles, that was just my idea. Um, so that could have been a hurtful situation. Church hurt comes in different manners, in different ways. And um, we have to not be so offensive, right? And even though it hurts, you don't have to live in that hurt. You don't have to revisit that hurt every time you think about church. There was a time when I was a part of another ministry where I wanted to bring our ministry to that ministry, right? To help them draw people to the ministry. There's people in the street that need need uh, clothes, food, and hygiene products. And I've mentioned our nonprofit before, Phases of Life International Ministries Incorporated. I look at it as a mobile ministry because we don't have a building. We never thought about having a building for us, per se, before the homeless. So I wanted to bring our ministry to this ministry to be able to help them draw people to the church, doing things for the church. And... For whatever reason, I just felt like, you know, that would be a great idea. That would be a great idea to be able to um, bring the food, the clothes and the hygiene products to the church. You know, people can come there. They'll hear about what we're doing in the community, so on and so forth. Well, the pastor said yes. However, there was a person that was connected to the pastor who just went in and asked him, do we partner with people? He says, no, and that's all he needed to hear. He didn't ask about the conversation with Sister Terza. He didn't find out, it wasn't like we was trying to uh, uh, do anything by putting our name on the church or nothing like that. It was just us working out of their church. It don't have to be partnership. And partnership just simply means you work together to make something happen, right? And that's how me and my husband was looking at it. And for whatever reason, it didn't go down like that. You know, we thought it was a good idea and however it wasn't. So that ministry, um, we love that ministry. And we learned so much about reading the word and um, finding out, you know, what we should be doing in this day and time. And it was great. We got to participate in that church as well. Uh, I sang on the choir. My husband helped with the uh, um, the recordings and stuff like that, setting things up for the satellite satellite uh, viewing, and we loved it. We loved it so much. And but I began to pray and ask God, you know, what do you want me to do? Okay, you've given me these gifts, talents, and abilities. What do you want me to do with these gifts? And then answers begin to come. See, a lot of people think that when we pray, we're not being answered, but we don't sit long enough to find out what it is. God gave us the name of our ministry on the way to church, on the way to Sabbath service. We were on our way to Sabbath service and it came to me and I told my husband, oh my God, this is the name of the ministry, Phases of Life International Ministries, because everybody is somebody to us, no matter what creed or color. You know, one nation of people, we're all one. That is our desire to be a blessing to all people that we're connected to in our surrounding area, across the world. If somebody email us and give us an address where they want to uh, receive uh, gifts from us. 
concerning our donations, clothes, food and hygiene products. All you have to do is just send it to our email, but you have to put your name, your first and last name, your address, and what you know, or where you want it to be sent. Oftentimes we get people sending us information about getting help, but they don't give us information we need to send it. So we, we can't send it without a name and address um, where you want it to be sent. Nevertheless, and that could be hurtful. That, that, that's church hurt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people not receiving the things that the church have promised that they will give, right? However, there's a break. If there's a breakdown in communications, it can't be done. And you can't blame the church for that, right? Being church mothers, right? Being church mothers in the church. I call it church mothers because, you know, um, if you don't go to the same church with your mother, um, you wasn't raised by a mother uh, or your biological mother, um, oftentimes God will send people in your pathway that would be a mother to you. Every church I've been to, I could say that there's been a church mother that was really dear to my heart, you know. Um, and I won't name any of them because I don't want somebody to say, well, she left out, you know, but I've had some wonderful church mothers that have really blessed my life with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, you know, clothes, you know, um, I know a lot of people don't believe in the gift of prophecy. Um, I believe that there may not be any prophets today, but I truly believe that people can still flow in the prophetic with, uh, with, with prophetic gifting. I have, uh, that gift as well, being able to speak into people's lives. I don't even know them. Um, however, it was through the church, through the church mothers that soothe the church hurt, you know? So, um, all the church mothers out there, many blessings to you. Thank you for, uh, those of you that have sown into my life with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and um, the clothing, shoes, all kinds of stuff I've gotten over the years. And so um, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, those things were prophesied to me. People flowing in gift of prophecy told me that there was somebody who was going to give me clothes with tags on them. And uh, sure enough, it was a mother that did that. And so um, I want to also say that oftentimes when we go through life, some people come in your life for a moment, a season, or a lifetime. Everybody's not going to stay in your life. You know what I'm saying? And you got to welcome to, to them to move on with what God has for them. And oftentimes we don't understand it. It was like, well, you're on the right track. And, you know, then you get off track, right? But who says it's off track if they're following the, the, the unctioning of the Holy Spirit? You know, spirit of discernment, you know, the, the law of intention is at work, you know, uh, intuition is at work, God consciousness and Christ consciousness is at work and you're following that, you know, if God is in everything and everybody, right, then the God in you, the light of God that's in you, you're able to create and co-create yourself right? You're able to do the things that God has called you to. Some people are fine with going to work, going to church and go home. I tried to be in that lane for many years, but I have a calling in my life. I'll never forget my mother, Janie. I'll tell her name, Janie Ruth um, Steele. She told um, one of my kids' fathers that, you know, this girl got a calling in her life. And if you're not here for the right reason, you need to move on out of the way. And I thank her for that because oftentimes we don't have mm, the voice to say the things that we desire to say. I, now, today I do, but back then I didn't. I was in my 20s and um, God used my mother that day. And I thank God for that because oftentimes you have dreams and visions that you know, you have to do them. And oftentimes church, church folk can block that blessing. Why? Because you're in a box. It's like you, 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 you here, right? And you thinking that this is the way, the only way you understand. 
And because religion has made it so that that certain things and certain belief systems is the only way, what about what God has given you? What about the gifts and the talents that God has given you that you're not using? You remember the story about the talent, right? And that and they took one of them took that one talent they had and buried it. Oh my goodness. Why are you going to bury your talent because of church? No, you listen, church is just as much on the outside of the building as it is on the inside. It's that thing that when you wake up, you still got to do it. It's that thing that you, first thing you wake up in the morning is like, you know, um, what can I do today? How can I serve today? What do you want me to say today? Right? So how do we continue to go through this life without fulfilling our dreams, our goals, and ambitions because of what somebody said to us, because of the way somebody treated us? mistreated us because of what somebody has done to us in the church. How about the favorite people on the choir? Mm -hmm. You got your favorite people on the choir, right? That shouldn't be so. That shouldn't be so. I'm going to give you four pointers to ponder right after this. Need a speaker for your next event? Call the Hope Coach Tawana Williams, born without arms, but decided not to make excuses. Visit TawanaWilliams.com or call 252-291-6081. Remember, excuses or results. You can't have both. Okay, welcome back to It's Tea Time with Terza. I'm going to give you four pointers. Here we go. Key number one, forgive. I forgive and have forgiven all the different people that have hurt me in church. From the pastor to the choir director to the um, group leaders the women organization, first lady, parking lot folk, <laughs> um, all the different ones, the children's church leaders, anything. The mothers in the church, they may have said something because sometimes our wisdom is not wise wisdom, okay? So um, some church ladies uh, have hurt you based on some of the things that they have said and you know, and I'm only saying this because it's all types of church hurt. It's over 65 million people that have not attended service or been inside of a church for any activity. And that's only, what, about 28%. So uh, key number two, make amends. Make amends with those people. Shout out to one church lady, uh, first lady, who apologized to me um, publicly. And I want to say publicly that I received that forgiveness, even though I've talked to her and told her, you know, when you've wronged somebody, it's your responsibility to forgive. You want to be forgiven, right? Matthew 6, 14 and 15. So uh, forgive. Forgive. Make amends. Number two is make amends. Make amends. Build those relationships up. Oftentimes you can't hang out with those people that that have uh, wronged you, right? That's not what it's for. It's for you to be able to unblock anything that's for you. Don't hold any alt or unforgiveness in your heart towards people. Make amends and then move on with your life. Point number three, right your wrong. Right your wrong. That means take accountability for the things that you have done, your part in that relationship going south. After you have forgiven them and you've made amends with them, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself and right your wrongs. Right your wrongs. Now it's time 
Number four, to move forward. Go on with your life. If you know that you're doing what God has intended for you to do, don't wait for somebody else to give you their approval. Maybe your relationship with God is closer because it's you and God. I'm here to bring attention to the things that helped me. I had to forgive the people that hurt me. And then I moved on. I had to forgive myself and my part in it and then move on. I opened myself up to the universe, the universal God that is in all of us. And I said, God, use me, use me, use me. So if you're a part of my tribe and you've been through some of the things that I've been through, especially church hurt, then stay tuned. We're going to be covering a lot of things that has happened in my life. And I hope and pray and give thanks with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, just basic information. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here to bring awareness to the things that we go through in life, to aspire you to continue to change, to reach towards the mark of your higher calling, restore yourself back to your right mind. I encourage you to make sure that you do what's necessary to fulfill your dreams and your goals. Aspire to do the things that only you know that you're called to do. Create change. You are a co-creator with God. Create change in your own life. Don't expect other people to do for you what you can do for yourself. I was there because I didn't know what to do. I had to learn what to do and do it for myself. Why? Because I didn't have the money to pay nobody, so I had to learn how to do it, right? And help heal others. Help heal others right where you are without payment, without expecting anything in return. Yes. For years, I did it. I did it for years. I still do it. Why? Because I believe that that's what I'm called to do, to help others, to reach, to reach. So I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share with you those four points, to forgive, to amend, to right your wrongs, and to move forward. I thank you so much for joining me here with this Tea Time with Terza. My name is Terza Andrews. I look forward to seeing you next time. And remember, you are the key to someone else's blessing. Take care. It's tea time. What you say, girl?